Wonderful. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the investor info session for the Invest Together in Climate Innovation program. We are so glad that you could join us today for this opportunity to hear more about this program that we're launching uh, at spring here um, this fall um, in partnership with RBC and to also hear from our 2022 investor participant and spring team member Luan Tolosa, the chief growth officer at spring. My name is Natalie Youssef and I'm a project manager here at Spring and will also be your host for today's info session. So at Spring, we have a very bold mission to change the world through innovation. And to be able to do this, we partner with various organizations, uh, including some supporters uh, for, for this program that's found on your screen that I'd like to take a quick minute to shout out. So a very big thank you to RBC, DLA Piper, Inc, Active Impact Investments, MNP, Backstretch, Genis, RSM, Carl Young Financial Services and Porta Law, whose support is very crucial for making this program successful. So huge, huge thanks to you for being longstanding partners of Spring and for joining us on this journey. We also now welcome you to share your name, where you're joining us from, and perhaps even drop a link to your LinkedIn and your business website for other folks here to connect with you as well. This will be our agenda for today's info session, including a preliminary program overview that covers the general approach to the program. We will then hear from our guest speaker, Luan, followed by a more detailed continuation of the program overview. As a quick reminder, all of this information is also uh, covered in our investor program pack that is found on our website, which we can also a link uh, to, uh, we'll, we'll drop a link to that in our chat as well. So being an early stage company at the forefront of climate solutions is no small feat. In AppSpring, we recognize this and are dedicated to supporting innovative technologies and ventures that are combating climate change head on. With that in mind, the Invest Together in Climate Innovation Program that is previously known as the Impact Investor Challenge was created as a value-packed program empowering purpose-driven founders to prepare for investment from like-minded impact investors. Looking at the program format, we typically receive around 50 to 60 applications from climate founders. This gets narrowed down uh, to top 15 companies by our selection committee here at Spring, which then gets narrowed down even further uh, into five finalists by the investors that are participating in the program. The program also includes around 20 to 25 investors that get to pre-commit capital. Uh, they invest a pooled minimum investment of $100,000. And these investors will also be walking through weekly sessions alongside the founders that guide them in uh, defining their investment thesis, navigating due diligence on the five companies. They get to foster relationships in Canada in uh, the impact space and more specifically in the climate finance space here. Uh, they get to engage in deal mechanics conversations as well as completing an investment memo. And before the program kicks off for the investors, the selected top 15 companies would have completed investment readiness uh, program in September to essentially get them ready to speak with investors. The investors will then have eight weekly sessions starting in October where they interact a lot with the founders. They have access to their pitch materials that assist them in narrowing down the 15 to top five and finally to the winner. And all of this will be including a lot of action oriented content, networking opportunities uh, with climate leaders in the space here in Canada as well as a lot of capacity building activities. And in the end, this will culminate in one direct investment. But of course, as we love saying at spring, we believe there are many winners at the end of the day. So talking a little bit about the value of joining, oftentimes we hear from angel investors that uh, angel investing can be quite siloed and is, is done alone. And this is one of the main reasons why we see a lot of angel networks and groups uh, form in the first place. So this program kind of gives you a little taste of what that's like. And if you're interested in seeking more deal flow opportunities after getting some due diligence training in this program, we do have some memberships available at the Spring Collective, which is our national impact angel network. Uh, it offers resources and webinars, events, as well as monthly deal flow opportunities to continue uh, deploying your capital. The deal flow that is part of this program is also pre-vetted by the selection committee at Spring, uh, meaning there will be quality companies participating from across the country. Um, in addition to that, the community-based structure of the program also means diversity of the investor cohort, where everyone has unique experiences that we can learn for, from, and um, it's a really great opportunity for you to also deepen those relationships with uh, new individuals. Speaking of which, one of the things we hear a lot from investors these days is that they really want to get to know the entrepreneur uh, that they're putting an investment into, and this is a great learning platform to be able to do that, given the amount of connection and FaceTime that you have with the founders during the due diligence process. 
With that, I would love to welcome Luan Tolosa back on the stage. Uh, she is the, Greek, the Chief Growth um, Officer at Spring, as well as a past investor in our 2022 National Health Impact Investor Challenge. Luan is responsible for leading all things growth and expansion across Spring's business entities. She is passionate about using her technical knowledge, entrepreneurial experience, and corporate background to empower impact-driven uh, founders, investors, and innovators to make a positive impact in the world. Hi, Luan. I can see you on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Natalie. Well, uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> Very excited to have you here and chat about your investor journey um, in a past program of ours uh, with our community. Of course. Um, so to start off the conversation, I would love for you to share a bit more about yourself, your background and your journey as an investor till date. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start from the, the very beginning. So I'm at this point of my journey as an investor, uh, as a part of the executive team at Spring. Um, but I didn't come from an entrepreneurial background or an investor background. Uh, any kind of inclination or any kind of indication of what investment looked like in the past for me, uh, quite frankly, were investors were rich people, um, still are a lot of them, <laughs> but definitely not accessible in the world that I came from. I didn't come from entrepreneurial parents. I didn't have a lot of that in, in my background. Uh, so actually, the first time I was introduced into investment or investors was really in commercial real estate. So I had cut my teeth in commercial real estate for 10 years right out, right out of undergrad school. So a lot of the experience I had was in a traditional asset class, uh, investment of asset management, and commercial development. So that was my first foray into understanding that people take capital to do things with it and then hopefully make create value with it. So that was my first introduction. Um, so I did that for about 10 years, decided I want to make more of an impact in my career, wasn't sure what. And like most good karma students who don't know what to do with their lives, mm -hmm. they go get an MBA thinking that will solve all your problems. So that was my second foray into a more formal background in finance and capital and investments. Uh, and that's actually where I started my entrepreneurial journey ironically enough, because most MBAs, they don't go and start a company. They usually do something else with that. Um, but I actually got introduced into entrepreneurship and innovation at, during my time at Queens. And then I started a company called Suit that I launched. I uh, got a couple of friends and family uh, to give me some capital to start it. I got some capital from the BDC. Uh, I exited that back in 2022, right before I joined the IIC. Uh, I call mys myself a recovering entrepreneur. Uh, I love entrepreneurship. I love the people in the ecosystem. Um, but entrepreneurship as a path is a super hard thing to do. So I respect and admire everyone that goes down that path. So for me, that exposure into taking capital um, was through that time with my company. And then, of course, if you're an entrepreneur in Canada, you get uh, you're introduced into the spring ecosystem and the spring mm -hmm. world. And that's how I got into the spring world. And that's really my first deep dive into the world of startup investing and startup investing at a scale that we do at spring. So my journey of uh, both from a traditional asset class into raising capital on my own to now, actually, how do I get into supporting entrepreneurs early in their career without necessarily being an entrepreneur myself, but mm -hmm. also still wanting to help um, them reach their goals and scale up in their world. And so for me, I've done a couple deals now on my, uh, both through the National Health Challenge in 2022 and then a couple on my own as well. Uh, so it's been a really interesting journey. I'm still very early on in my investment career. I'm still kind of building what that looks like for me in my portfolio, but that's my high level journey of how I got there. Amazing. Thanks for that. I, I personally love hearing people's um, stories and how they ended up in the impact investing space because, you know, despite the differences here and there, there's always that common ground with impact investors, which we see in your background, whether it being, you know, drive it, your drive to solve complex issues or, or you know, deploying capital in something that aligns with your values or whatnot. But, um, you know, yeah, thanks for sharing and, and love to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, and so for my next question, uh, what attracted you to the program in the first place? Yeah, so I, so at this point, I had been in Springs World for a couple of years. I had taken capital, so I had exposure to that world, but I wanted more of a concrete way to do that, more of a concrete way to do that. Um, I've always been the type of person uh, regardless of contrary to what my parents would say and people around me, I'm fairly risk adverse in terms of how I deploy my capital and what I, I 
spend my time on. And so I'm fairly still uh, early in that career. I was fairly still early in that career. So what I wanted to be able to do is actually take a more structured approach of how I might get into startup investing. It's very uh, risky and very expensive to try to do it specifically on your own. And I'm sure there's probably people that, that are more than happy to do that. But I wanted a way to do that with a framework and with some security that as I go through this learning journey, I'm trying to mitigate the amount of uh, mistakes I make along the way. So obviously being part of the spring team, I knew about the IIC uh, at the time, Impact Investor Challenge at the time. And I wanted to do it as a participant because it's different when you're on the other side of the table as someone with skin in the game and putting your own capital up. So for me, uh, I was intimately involved with the program in kind of different ways. And I wanted to specifically be a participant. So that was the first piece. And the second piece, I was on mat leave, maternity leave, mm -hmm. when I decided that I wanted to do this as well. Um, so it just kind of gave me a little bit more space to think about it in a way that um, that I was able to take the most out of that program uh, in terms of putting in all the time and effort that I wanted to put into. Um, and then on top of that, the last thing of a reason as to why I was attracted in the first place was because we were doing um, kind of a health tech lens at that time, I really wanted to understand the thematic of health uh, innovation and health tech, especially because I was a mat leave. I just had come out of my own kind of um, health things with maternity leave. So I, I felt like this was a kind of a right fit as well in terms of looking at companies working in that space. Um, and so that's what attracted me to the program. Natalie, I can't see you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thanks for that, Luan. I think, you know, like in addition to what you mentioned, one of the biggest uh, value adds that we keep on hearing from investors that have participated in the program, as well as the connections that they make with other investors and founders in the program. And especially with this kind of format, we kind of even touched on it earlier on, but we hear that angel investing is often done alone and quite siloed. Uh, but the landscape for this is quite, um, is changing quite quickly. And I think with programs such as the Impact Investor Challenge or the Invest Together in Climate Innovation program, you know, you go through these eight weeks, they pass by so quickly, you suddenly meet individuals that are both aspiring and seasoned investors in the space whom you've never probably met before. Um, you work together to analyze companies and these investors may also come from very various uh, walks of life, occupations and backgrounds. And so, you know, the, they may come up with uh, different questions in the due diligence process or they have different perspectives on things. Um, and that intersectionality also gets to prompt you to think differently as an investor um, mm -hmm. and approach due diligence in a, in a very collaborative environment as well. But um, yeah, so there's definitely a lot of intersectionality involved with that. Um, we really try to nurture that uh, community building aspect in the program. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, you know, looking back at your experience, what were some of the key highlights of your experience? You kind of touched on it in, your, in the previous question, but diving mm -hmm. a bit a bit into that a bit more as well. Yeah, honestly, actually, a lot of the things that you said, Natalie, in terms of um, what's unique about this program specifically, is it because it, it's cohort based and it's programmatic. So there is mm -hmm. a definitive start and end date. And I, what I love about the cohort based model is you get to learn from all different types of people in different walks of life mm -hmm. coming into the room. So when you get that opportunity to hear what they're thinking about, what questions come up top of mind for them, it's a lot of the time things that you haven't even thought about, uh, especially as you go into due diligence and going mm -hmm. through your investment memos. When you start to debate with, were, in my group specifically, there were, I think there were seven or eight people all different backgrounds. Um, some were doctors, some were nurses, some were people in business, some people just very different walks of life wanting to figure out what is the best company to invest in and, mm -hmm. and make sure we run through due diligence. You get to see how their thinking um, kind of transpires and then you get to apply what works for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of number one, thinking about the different mindsets and different perspectives people bring into that conversation where you wouldn't have been able to do that if you were not in a cohort based kind of decision making uh, piece with a team. Mm -hmm. um, the content uh, as well. So I think about, you know, what are the things that I didn't know about coming into the program? So you hear jargon like your cap tables, uh, you hear jargon, all those different types of things. And through the content over the course of the eight to 10 weeks, you get to learn actually in a safe space and ask the questions of what does that actually mean to um, you know, take equity, debt, uh, what does a cap table look like, what happens with dilution, all of those things that 
you know, sometimes in the world that you of investment, sometimes people are assuming that you know all these things, but you get to come into a space and actually ask the questions that maybe you, you know, didn't have the courage to ask before. So that's point number two, being able to learn in a way that um, is safe enough that you can ask all the different types of questions and innocent coming, an innocent coming into the program saying, I don't, I don't get this. Um, so that's number two. And then the, the biggest takeaway are all the people that I met coming out of the program that are doing really cool things that I'm still talking to today. Actually, I asked them um, someone that was on my DD team if she wanted to come up on the screen today. She just had a conflict. But my point is, um, there were so many cool people of different backgrounds of different perspectives that came in there for very similar, or sorry, very values aligned, um, a very values aligned program. And so coming out of that, you create these relationships with people that maybe you don't invest with them in the program, but you maybe do other things with them outside of outside of the IIC. Um, so those are the three big buckets I think about in terms of my experience, the content, the people that I met, the space to be able to ask questions mm -hmm. that you wouldn't have courage to do otherwise. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I think, you know, um, it's important to note that there's always a place for for you in the program, for any investor in this program, whether you are a seasoned venture capitalist investor or whether you're part of a government agency funding these sorts of initiatives, there's always a place for people to experiment with the sort of like bilateral mm -hmm. mentoring and learning. Um, yeah. And sometimes you learn more when you have to teach others. And sometimes you learn more when you experience what it's like being an investor from a different, um, you know, from a different perspective or a different voice and framework that you, you typically use. So, um, yeah. and that's a super great point, Natalie, because sometimes people think, oh, it's for people earlier on in their investment journeys. Mm -hmm. But I, what I really valued in our cohort, at least, there were a wide spectrum of people from yeah. super seasoned investors to really new. And in that case, I was a new investor. But I think regardless of whether this is your first deal or your 10th deal, you get to learn so many different perspectives and ways to approach something that you might have not thought about before. Exactly. So I think with the RBC, with the climate lens on it, yes, you might have done five deals in kind of similar spaces, but the type of entrepreneurs that come through that uh, program coming up, they might have a completely different type of innovation that mm -hmm. you wouldn't know how to kind of vet the deal on your own. So I think regardless of your season or not, you're going to learn something different and it's going to challenge you in a different way. So um, yeah. One hundred percent. And then also just adding on to that, you know, it's since this is an impact investor program fo focused on um, uh, impact investing, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's really important to also kind of go into that due diligence conversation with the founders as an impact investor. So are you are you going to prioritize a gender lens or are you looking at an angle mm -hmm. that empowers indigenous communities or are you simply looking at this as someone who um, has a time frame in mind? So you're looking at the expediency of the founder or their ability to scale. Um, uh, in, in speed, especially with climate solutions. So, you know, there's so many ways that you can come into this, as you've mentioned, and it's there's a place for everyone and it's quite unique in that yeah. sense. Yeah, and I think but, to, to add to that, with the entrepreneurial journey, what I love about what we do at Spring is we consider impact as a journey. Mm -hmm. uh, you're impact curious all the way to impact driven and everything in between. And the idea is that as you connect with Spring, whether that's through a program or otherwise, you're moving along that journey. And mm -hmm. that's the same thing for the investors and the entrepreneurs. So um, as entrepreneurs, you all people know that you can't do everything all at once. So how do you continue to move the dial, whether that's your founding team is um, super diverse and then you start to build on that later on. I think on both sides of this program, you we get to see how that journey happens for both investors. Exactly. And entrepreneurs. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, amazing. And, you know, just uh, on to the, the programmatic side of things, obviously there is a time commitment involved. Um, mm -hmm. And so what would you advise investors that are potentially looking into this program and participating? Uh, what would you uh, recommend in this case for them to maximize their experience in the program? Yeah, I think like anything, like especially anything that's programmatic, what you get out of it is what you put into it. Mm -hmm. And so I think maximize experience, I think, it is an investment on a time front of how you do something like this because you're walking through learnings, you're walking through building relationships, and you're walking through the actual process of getting to a deal, which actually in real life can take months, three mm -hmm. to six months or longer, even if depending on how you're running your, your process. But when you're condensing all of that from beginning of a, of a deal flow piece all the way down to closing the deal mm -hmm. um, into 10 weeks, actually what you're doing is taking those 
several months and condensing it down, which exactly. means it is going to be a time commit. Um, so I think the best way to maximize if you're going to experience this to the full extent is you actually connect with the entrepreneurs. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I, I learned about, um, so we, we were on different due diligence teams. So one company, um, I had Definity as our due diligence team, absolutely great company. And I got to connect with other entrepreneurs as well, not only the people that were in my DD team, but also the people that were on other parts. So connecting with entrepreneurs, understanding where they are on the journey. So that's that was a really uh, cool aspect that you wouldn't normally get to do if you were to do a deal on your own. Um, so that's one. Uh, connecting with the other investors and learning about their journey and how they got into the space and how they're and where they're trying to go with it was also a really amazing benefit that I got because you got to meet people that had done a couple of deals and then also a lot more deals in there. So you get to see different things that they're concerned about mm -hmm. and where they eventually want to go. Um, so a lot of it is this relationship building because who knows if you're going to do a deal with them together in the future is another thing. Um, I remember there were a couple of guest speakers as well and understanding why, what they care about, understanding what they're working on. So ultimately, I think um, the best piece of advice is that if you are going to go into this, go into it with a really open mind and knowing that relationships and um, the conversations you have are going to be one of the biggest things that will help maximize your experience in the program. Because um, quite frankly, you can you can Google how to do a deal probably and learn it from YouTube, but it's it's all about these other little nuances in your relationships and what you learn through other people within the cohort that um, will give you the most kind of value for your time there. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think, you know, touching on the, the time commitment as well, it, typically and normally with private investments in a more traditional setting, due diligence can take months at a time, as you've mentioned. But with this program, we yeah. make it shorter in, in around eight to 10 weeks with the goal of making it a bit more efficient and collaborative with everyone involved for both the investors and founders who have very busy lives. And so yeah. um, it's quite a, ba a balanced approach in that case. Yeah. So before we wrap up our conversation, before we dive a bit more into the, the, the details of the program overview, is there anything, um, you know, any short or quick parting advice that is uh, that you'd like to give to any of the participants, uh, you know, joining us today? If they went away with one thing from this info session, what would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, aside from just do it, um, I think there's there's one piece of advice is I think Getting started is probably the hardest part, regardless if you're doing it on your own or you're coming into a program similar to Springs or elsewhere. I think getting started is probably the hardest thing and asking, how do I start? Where do I start? When and with who? And what I really loved about what I experienced with uh, 2020 is IIC is that you're doing it with a group. And so, for example, my team did due diligence on one company, but our company didn't actually win. They got to top three, but they didn't actually win the final prize. Um, and it was a great experience to see what the other DD teams were doing and why they thought that company was, should be the winner. And so for me, again, going back to my earlier comment about, you know, being risk adverse, um, that was a great way for me to feel confident that regardless of where the capital goes to, I know that someone is looking at it and we're looking at it together. And there's a bunch of smart people that are saying this is the right company to, to put the capital uh, to use for and the biggest impact that it'll create. So I think best piece of advice from, from me, I think, is if you're looking to get started in this world and startup investing, mm -hmm. doing it in a way that helps you feel confident enough to um, de-risk yourself, try to make as little mistakes as possible early on because your capital, of course, is super limited in the beginning. I think um, my piece of advice is to just start with something that you feel super comfortable with mm -hmm. um, and then trying to get as much support rallied around you to do it. So as an example, this program. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks so much, Luan. I am sure many potential investors joining us today for this info session will be walking away with a lot of great insights, whether they've joined you know, online or watching this recording. Uh, but thank you so much again for your time. Amazing. Um, for anyone in the in the audience, if you have any questions or would like to connect further with Luan, uh, we'll be dropping her LinkedIn profile in the chat for you to connect further with her. Um, and you can also reach her at Luan at spring.is. Great. Um, thanks so much, Luan. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. All right. Take Talk care. Soon. Talk soon. Wonderful. So 
For the next part of the investor info session, I'd like to take a quick moment to walk through some of the key items that's uh, related to the participant journey, upcoming dates, the investment overview, and some frequently asked questions from past investors in our previous programs. This information as well is going to be available on our website and under the investor program pack of Invest Together in Climate Innovation. So as mentioned previously, we've carefully designed a two-stage process for the founder specifically, which includes an investment readiness portion in September. Uh, this investment readiness uh, portion will essentially provide the founders with an opportunity, opportunity to prepare themselves and their ventures to pitch to the investors. Then we have the second part of the program, which is the investment challenge itself uh, that will begin in October to early December. This is where the investors get to meet with the founders. They'll be diving into due diligence with, the, with their team members, as well as their assigned five finalists. And they also go through a lot of weekly sessions with guest speakers, uh, specifically climate leaders in the space here in Canada. The investors would also be distilling the top 15 into a cohort of top five. And that at the end of the program will culminate in one direct investment um, of $100,000 minimum. Regarding some important dates, the Founder for Founder applications is actually this Friday, August 30th. Um, and so by the 5th of September, after the long weekend, our selection committee at Spring uh, would have selected and notified the top 15. The three to four sessions for the investment readiness portion for the founder specifically will take place sometime between the 10th and 24th of September. The founders would then have a two week break to kind of lean into what they've learned and apply it before meeting with the investors. And then the founders and investors get to meet together on October 8th, after which we will then begin our sessions, uh, followed by a Q&A session with the top founders and investors on October 29th. And by the 1st of November, the investors would have selected the five finalists uh, moving into due diligence. And then on December 5th, um, that would be our exciting and public facing uh, program finale, uh, where the investors finally get to decide who the winner of the prize is. So we shared a little bit about the structure of the program, and now you might be wondering who this program is for and is it for you? It is for you if you are considered to be an accredited investor curious about impact investing, climate and purpose led ventures. This can also include individuals who are new to startup investing, are uh, wanting to learn more about the process and gain technical skills or are simply interested in deal flow. They may be uh, also interested in developing and refining their investment thesis what it means to be uh, you know, really focusing on environmental and social issues. And they also get to learn a lot from that group dynamic. So it's a really great opportunity for folks to network and to really deepen their understanding on specific terms and topics in the space. Uh, this could also include founders. If you're interested in learning about how investors think, this may be for you. And could also apply if you are a fund manager, an entrepreneur, a recent graduate that's interesting in addressing very complex um, issues um, during their time. So with all the information provided so far, you may be keen or curious to know who the companies are um, and who essentially the investors will be conducting due diligence on. And so this final confirmation is still being finalized at the moment, as we've mentioned. So the founder applications is due this Friday, August 30th. And after the long weekend on the 5th, we should have the top 15 selected. Um, but in a nutshell, these companies must be based in Canada. They must be focused on innovative climate solutions. And this very broad umbrella of climate can mean that we can approach uh, this from so many different angles. So this can include renewable and clean energy, for instance, agricult agriculture uh, technology. It could be carbon and sustainability analytics. If you're a SaaS company, built environment and so on. So it, it really covers a, a broad range of sectors under climate. Uh, they must be at a technology readiness level of four at a minimum and beyond, and uh, typically uh, at pre-seed to seed stages, raising between two hundred fifty thousand to a million dollars. And a very important aspect for us at Spring is applicants with a very strong and diverse team. Uh, these these companies will have a leg up in the process, so we're looking to prioritize applications from BIPOC individuals, women, immigrant-led, and non-binary founders as well. So some information about the investment itself and how it will actually work. So at the end of the program, there will be a minimum $100,000 investment into one winning company. And this exact amount is uh, really dependent on the final investor commitments. But our past winners have walked away with amounts that have, uh, you know, have surpassed 100,000 sometimes um, at the 200,000 mark um, against the initial target in specific scenarios. 
We also like typically sharing this deal flow with our uh, National Spring Collective, which is Canada's leading impact angel uh, investor network, um, and as well as other ecosystem partners in the space that are wanting to be part of the opportunity. This investment itself is going to be made uh, through something called a special purpose vehicle, an SPV, and that will be created and funded by the investors in the cohort. The terms of the investment um, are set on a company individual basis. So that basically means that the founders will be responsible for uh, doing that and for con conducting that. However, those terms will be evaluated by the investors and uh, can be further negotiated if applicable during the due diligence process. It is also important to note that Spring does not take any carry on the investment. So 100% of any returns will be allocated to the investors as well. Uh, the SBV also gets to withhold $5,000 of the final investment uh, committed uh, for lifetime corporate expenses. So this would include any accounting or legal fees that are associated with running the investment vehicle. And at the end of the program and based on the final investor commitment, Spring also invoices the winning company 3% of that final amount as a program and learning fee for the winner. And finally, there is also an opportunity for co-investment by the BDC Thrive Lab, given that uh, Spring is a proud co-investment partner, only if the company is uh, women-led and that is also pending due diligence, of course. So moving on to some frequently asked questions from our past investors. Starting off with the first one, is the whole program virtual and what is the time commitment? So the program is going to be fully virtual as it has a national focus. So we welcome both founders and investors from all regions around Canada. We do have some social events that are sprinkled throughout the program in major cities such as Vancouver and Toronto, as well as other cities, really depending on the composition of the investor cohort itself. Uh, but the weekly sessions uh, for this program will be taking place every Tuesday, starting October 1st until December 5th. Uh, they'll be taking place between 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific. And as you begin due diligence in the latter half of the program with the, the five finalists, uh, you can plan on setting aside some additional time just to complete any analysis uh, that's remaining for your assigned company, as well as completing the investment memo, which will ultimately decide on who the winner is at the end of the day. The second question, uh, what are the program costs? So we currently have an early bird discount of $350 until September 15th, after which it will go up to $500 per investor. However, if you are thinking of joining with, uh, an with another investor, so a friend of yours or a colleague, we do offer a deal of $500 total for the two of you if you're joining. And obviously, if you are a Spring alumni, uh, so if you're an investor that has already participated in these programs before or a partner, your program fees are waived. So what is classified as an accredited investor? A commonly used criteria that we use here is uh, income. So an individual who has a before tax income of over $200,000 for at least two years in a row or a household income of at least 300,000, so that would be in combination with your spouse or partner, uh, would classify you as an accredited investor. We do have some other criteria listed, but that is typically the most common one being used today. And does Spring take any board or observer seats? So at Spring, we typically like to stay as administrative as possible. We simply just facilitate the investment process for the investors and founders from start to finish. So there is a possibility for investors in the cohort, however, to do this, but it really depends on the round. It depends on the founder and the company and whether if it's actually required. What tends to typically be offered at times is an advisor role, and that is also at the discretion of the founder. And so have you had any exits from past winners, which is a great question. So um, over the last seven years, Spring has delivered around 17 of these impact investor challenges till date. There have not been any exits in past programs as these companies are quite early stage. So they're very focused on scaling. Um, however, almost all the companies that have uh, participated in their programs have raised again uh, since, uh, since winning the challenges. And one metric to see the success of the portfolio is the markup on valuations. And we have seen around a 2.1x markup on average with some of the companies obviously being on the lower end and other companies uh, being on the higher end. So these markups are typically a good sign um, as it shows the company's ability to provide value creation. So whether that being a combination of new revenue streams, new intellectual property or new strategic partnerships. Uh, so as mentioned previously, there haven't been any exits, uh, but given the short time frame since launching these programs, uh, this is, of course, not unusual. And 
the last question over here is how is the winning company selected? Um, so at this point, at the very end of the program, when the winning company is selected, investors would have gone through the entire due diligence from start to finish and have completed an investment memo. The selection is going to be done by the investor cohort and Spring has no say in this and simply facilitates the, the process. So the investors would be distilling the top 15 to a top five. Uh, they get to review the pitch materials and whatnot. They conduct Q&A with the founders. And then once again, they do that for a second time when it comes to the winner. This happens by majority vote and the winning company is going to be determined as the company that receives at least 50% of the votes from the investors. And in some cases, this would require a re-vote if there is a tie. So in summary, what you kind of get out of this program in a nutshell is uh, a couple of things over here, as you can see on your screen. So number one, pre-vetted uh, deal flow of climate ventures. You also get to have access to a network of like-minded investors and founders across the country. Um, a hands-on experiential learning uh, process with expert guest speakers and mentors in Canada's climate space, all while making an actual investment. So that's it from us today. We hope you found this investor inv in info session useful. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, you are welcome to contact our team um, on, you know, just at, at help at spring.as or through LinkedIn at any time. The web page also has a lot of great useful information um, that, you know, you would require just to know that you're set and ready to apply if you're interested. And we hope to, you know, we look forward to hearing from you. And if not in this program, hopefully somewhere else in the spring community. Um, so once again, thanks again for joining us today and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, um, depending on where you're tuning in from. So um, thanks again.